Please join with me in welcoming leadership lecturer and our brother, David Greenberg. You know, when I was your age, somebody came up here and spoke to me. I must look really old, right? So I wanted to explain something what I have that you don't have right now. I remember what it was like being where you are. I remember what it was like being 17 or 18. And as much as I thought I knew everything, and I did, because I was a Pike brother and I was at Syracuse and things were good, I've come to realize that some of the older people in my life gave me great direction. And I know that a lot of times in my life I've been through keynote speaking events, that halfway through the keynote speaking event, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my watch, I'm clapping at the appropriate times because somebody's clapping next to me. And then when the keynote is over, I lean over and I tap the guy forward in front of me and I go, God, thank God that's over. Tonight's not going to be one of those nights. If you will allow me to bring you in to what I have done for the last 30 years, I'm telling you there are going to be points in your life where you're going to have an aha moment. And I don't want you to remember that it was David Greenberg that told you whatever. I want you just to think back of a weekend that you spent in Memphis, a weekend where you learned from me and some of the other speakers that are coming tonight, and just think back to saying, I get it. If you can do that, then my job, coming down here from New York, being in this 120% humidity climate, will, will be done, and I will be very, very happy. But I want you to know that tonight, I'm not coming to you as what people call a leader or a success. I'm coming to you as a Syracuse University arts and science graduate who had dyslexia as a kid and other learning problems. I'm coming here to tell you that everybody can be a leader. Everybody can be successful. And a leader and success has nothing and will never have anything to do with how much money you make, what car you drive, and what kind of clothes you wear. The true leaders that I've seen in my life, period, are those that people look up to in times of trouble, in times of stress, and in times of happiness. And if you can look back at your life, even though I'm only 49, and you'll see some of the things that I've done, and accomplished and enjoyed. And if you can look back and your kids can look at you and be, wow, you're going to talk to how many people at your, at your fraternity's convention? Well, to me, that makes it all worth it. So what I'm asking you to do tonight is I really want you guys to stay focused with me. I'm not going to teach this as or talk like a keynote speaker where they get up behind the post and they look down and they just read it. That would drive me crazy. I'm going to treat you as if I treat my West Point cadets when I speak to them, my Syracuse graduates, when I talk on CNBC or Fox. We're going to be equals tonight, okay? But what I, this is what I need from you, okay? I want you to realize that being Pike is unique and special. I would not have come down here if I didn't think so. And there's so much that you can learn. But we're going to stay focused tonight, and this is going to be an interactive conversation. This is my first day of work, two weeks out of Syracuse. I was very happy because the guy that I was working for turned out to be in the mafia. And when I got there, one of his friends was found in a ditch. And they told me to come back two weeks later. So I had two weeks to kill in Chicago. I had nothing to do. So I, I was like lost. But here is me two weeks later. I'm ready to walk onto the trading floor at the first time. Again, notice, notice the chin. I don't see it somewhere. Notice the chin and stomach. Not there yet. OK, so the pizza hadn't beaten me and the sour cream and onion potato chips, and the donuts. We can keep going on. But this was a very interesting day in my life. This is where I learned, and it's very, very important to understand. Mentors come in all shapes, sizes, ages. They can be women, they can be men, they can be older, they can be younger. The key thing is, is to always keep your eyes and ears open to know when a mentor is being there to mentor you. They might not even know they're doing it. I met a guy there my first day. I went to Chicago. My father was one of the largest silver traders in the world, and he was in New York. So I wanted to go to Chicago just to do the, you know, my own thing. 
And luckily, and unluckily, the first day that I'm in Chicago, this guy, he's about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, scraggly red hair, a beard like Santa Claus, but red, kind of hunched over, grabs my neck and says, I know who you are. What do you mean you know who I am? He goes, you're going to be in the pit one day. You know, I never got in the pit. It's been 30 years. I'm never going to get in the pit. Someone had told him, you know, who my father was at the time and that I would have the opportunity, hopefully, to go into the trading pit. And he goes, kid, come here and sit down. And he goes, shut up. And I don't know what's going on. He goes, I'm going to give you some advice. It was the most amazing advice. He goes, I don't want you walking out of here any day without picking up something new, without learning something, without seeing something. He goes, I don't care if it's the way that a runner runs when he's got a certain order ticket into the pit, what, the, what his face looks, what his speed is. I don't care if you look at somebody and saw that they were out all night drinking and what they look like hung over the next day. I don't care if it's who's sleeping with who or who's talking to who. I want you to notice something, the way the clock moves, the way the colors of the jackets change. Don't walk out of here without learning something every day. You know, it's, you know they, they have, used to have a saying, get your head out of your, you know what? Well, now it's get your head out of your phone. You know, I, I said to people, you know, people just sitting there like this all day, you know, like this. Get your head out of your phone. Look around you. Look, listen, learn. It's very important. If you are the type of person that takes everything that is offered to you and everything that you can see this weekend, notice how many people showed in, up in the room tonight. Notice who's paying attention, who's not paying attention, because I might go like, Thank you. You never know when that's going to happen, right? But you got to stay on your toes. Being a trader, the best thing that we did was we learned to live in the moment. I mean, I used to say this and it was impressive at the time, but you know, long term for me was 45 seconds, short term for me was like two seconds. Well now long term in computer words is a nanosecond, so you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just old fashioned. But you got to make sure that you're always in the position to take in everything. Be a sponge, and at, at any age, you got to just make sure you're going to take in everything. If you walk out of this weekend and only learn one thing, it is a failure. I've learned 20 things since I've walked through the door this morning. I mean, just for example, Ryan's driving me here, and he tells me about this uh, theater arts building that they have, and I'm all of a sudden like, wait a minute, I'm doing a deal with somebody in Rochester, New York. Maybe I could put these people together with a theater arts company, and look what we have. You don't know when one conversation from one person could change your life going forward. So always pay attention. So what it really showed you was integrity is everything. You know, NYMEX politics was a contact sport, and I was in it very deep. But even with all the, the, the politics and the moving around and everything else, everybody was still honest and straightforward. What we're going to do is I want to teach you guys what it was like being on the floor. There was no greater rush than being a trader on the floor. Okay? We weren't the stock market. Anybody's here, parents here, stockbrokers? I apologize. So, <laughs> stockbrokers are great. We love the stockbrokers. However, the stockbrokers were the guys at the Nick Games that were still in their jackets and their tie tied up to here at 11 o'clock at night. The commodity brokers were the guys in the ripped jeans and t shirts that were probably having beer since 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Much different crowd. Stock in the stock market, if you ever see it on TV, they would walk up to you and they'd tap you on the shoulder and they would go, excuse me, you know, I would like to buy a thousand shares of IBM. Nothing wrong with that. In commodities, we were all in the circle, as you saw in the pit, and we would scream our brains out, wave our hands, try to get noticed because it was recognition trade. Just because if I go sold you know, over here and you go buy them, right, and let's say he wanted me to take out his sister and I didn't, I could look at, he could look at me and go, okay, or I could look at him and say, you got nothing, and then you got 20, you got 20, you got 20, you got 20, go home. Okay, so it was a much different thing. It was a very, very rough game. This guy over here, Stevie Baggs, the one to the leaning over there, he's one of the toughest guys, Staten Island guys. The commodity market was all Staten Island and Bronx and Brooklyn, where you know, the, the, the um, stock exchange was all like you know, Harvard and Yale and Princeton. So I always wanted to see a fight between the commodities market and the stock market. That would have been a lot of fun. So what I want you guys to do, okay, I want everybody, we're just going to do a little interactive thing, because I want to see what it was like. I want everybody to stand up. Okay? You're going to control this side. You're going to control this side. Now, when we were trading, I mean, forget this. Okay, whenever I wore a suit, people thought I was on some kind of interview. 
because most of the time, unless there was a senator down there or we were filming something, we were in, we were in je uh, not even jeans, we were in chinos, we were in uh, sneakers and either golf shirts or once in a while we got a t-shirt. We made a lot of money in golf shirts. It's amazing what you can do. But, so this, you know, this to me is just, I feel like I'm in a monkey suit. So when we wanted to buy things, which way do things our hands were? This way, right? Because buying, I want them, right? But we wanted to sell things, which way did we go? Sell. So I want, on the count of three, I want, and you know what the weirdest thing was? It was hearing your own voice the first few times. This is very embarrassing, but you guys proved you could do that already. So I want you guys to control this side, you control that side. And when I say one, two, three, I want you to scream out, buy them. Okay? One, two, three. Buy them! No, that was okay. Ready? One, two, three. Buy them! Okay, no, I don't see anybody's hands going. You gotta get the hands going, too. Okay? This is interactive learning here, okay? One, two, three. Buy them! Okay, good. Now I want you to say sold. One, two, three. Sold! sold. It's funny. Everybody says sold much better than buy them. I don't know why we all did the same thing. We always go like, sold! And it was like, oh, people used to love it. You just got out of such a rush. You know? It was good. It's like, just get out of here. So now, anybody that has a birthday from June, May, I'm sorry, January to June, I want to say buy them and from July to December is gonna say sold. Okay, one, two, three. Sold! Okay, now what I want you to do, okay, is you're gonna keep doing that till I say stop. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Sold! Now put your hand on your chest. You know what it was like going to the Super Bowl every day for work. <laughs> and you'll wonder why I have mood issues now. <laughs> okay, you guys can sit back down. But I have to tell you, it was great. There is no excuse for people of your age not to be an expert with social media, period. It is the most important thing that you will ever do going forward. How many of you have LinkedIn accounts so far? Okay, very good. Okay, I want anybody with a LinkedIn account, I'll put in a special thing like Pi Kappa Alpha, so you know, if somebody say, do you know this person? It really ticks me off, then you gotta get their email address. I'm like, if I knew them, I wouldn't be going through this thing, so do me a favor. I want everybody that has it to add me to your LinkedIn. Everyone who doesn't have LinkedIn should have a LinkedIn by tomorrow or the next day, and then add me. You all need to start working on your network now. Okay, networking is going to be a key in your life, period. Now, as you heard, I teach at West Point and Syracuse. I stopped kind of going up to Syracuse a few years ago because my daughter was in Newhouse and I wanted to kind of make it her campus. I didn't want to keep showing up. But I teach a couple of courses, the transition of open outcry trading to electronic trading and what it's done to the markets. Let's talk about honor. honor. Does Pikes have honor? Yeah. Well, I was the only board member in the world that voted against electronic trading. When I told my chairman, who actually got me onto the board, that I was gonna vote against it, he said, if you vote against electronic trading, you're off the board. I said, well, it's gonna hurt the market, you're gonna have too many market swings, and it's gonna be manipulation. He goes, yeah, but it's gonna be good for the IPO, and it's gonna be good for the trading floor, and we had a whole argument about it. I voted against it, I stood up, it was the only vote in 9 history that was taken backwards. We said, who's against it? I said, me, it's been a very nice seven years, I'll see you guys later. But I kept my integrity and guess what? If you look at the markets now, I think that it turned out that I was right. We talk about moving past mistakes. What are you guys gonna do more than anything in the world? And this is the whole course that I teach, or whole class. What are you guys gonna do more than anything when you guys graduate? Anybody? Come on, show of hands, what are you gonna do? Make money? Work? Yes! Have you been to one of my lectures? Oh, that was good. You see, that's very good. Yes, he got it right. You are gonna screw up more than you ever knew possible. And I teach a class on screwing up. And I have to be honest with you, it's one of my best classes. Because I'll give you one little snippet and, why, and, and how we think. I was one of 15 or 17 traders brought down to the Marines down in Quantico. They want to know how we thought, how we thought so quickly, how we could make such big decisions with that money on the line. Because what you need to understand is I didn't trade other people's money. I only traded my own money. 
where I only trade my own money. So when I have a bad day, it's not like I got a commission. If I have a bad day, you want to go home, kick the dog, throw it out the window, do something crazy. Okay? And what's interesting is also you find is that when you have a good day, it's not as fun as having a bad day is bad. Okay? So we learned that in trading, 70% of our trades are bad trades. So we had to learn very quickly not to sit on our butt and go, oh my God, I screwed up. This is terrible. What am I going to do? You learn to react. You learn to trust your reactions. The one example that I, one of many examples that I give in this lecture is that imagine being in your kitchen and there's a bottle of Snapple on the counter. The Snapple falls, you look at the, the Snapple, it goes all on the counter, down the side of the counter, onto the, onto the floor. You go, you know something, I gotta clean this thing up. You pick up the thing, you go, you get a mop, you clean it all up, it's all clean, right? Or there's the kid or adult that the minute it, it falls, grabs it, picks it up, grabs a towel, or puts his arm down right here, and the spill never hits the floor. Which person do you wanna be? Which person do you want to think like? Right, the second one, you want to be able to react. We talk about reaction and reaction speed. It'd be great if I could see this. <laughs> reaction and reaction speed. But most important thing that you have to understand when you go out there, you're gonna screw up, it's okay, it's how you handle the screw ups that are important. Do not sit on your butt and cry about your screw ups. That is bad. Understanding that you will have them and immediately going out and fixing them which we'll talk about at some other date, um, will be good. But my newsletters, have, we talk about that stuff. I also teach about navigating and understanding the complexities of the workforce. Let's just take one example to give you a quick freebie right now. Okay, when you walk into a meeting, go to the meeting five minutes early. You know what people don't do anymore? They don't look at nonverbals. I made more money than you could ever imagine by people's nonverbals. I knew that there was a guy in the gold ring that whatever he had a big sell order, he'd turn his back, take a deep breath in, because you had to breathe to say sold. And all of a sudden, it was 90 bid. I go, sold at 90, sold at 80, sold at 70. I go, 50 bid. And he goes, sold. Because I could tell by his nonverbals. I could tell by the guy behind me that when he was offering 500 contracts and he was taking my shoulder and pushing it down to the ground and I was trying to hold him up, that he really had the order. And I was not going to stand in front of him. And if he offered 500, I kept my mouth shut. But guess what if he offered 500 and he didn't touch me? I looked at him, I go, buy him. He goes, oh, five. And then he would show the whole ring that he knew not, he didn't have it. So if you take the time to read people, again, get your head out of your phones. Read people, look at people. When I have a meeting, okay, I would always get to the boardroom 10 minutes early. For you guys, 10 minutes early might be too early, so go five minutes early, only because they might wonder what you're doing in there. But watch the people walk into the room. Watch how they interact. Are there enemies that are talking to each other? Are there friends that aren't talking to each other? You'll get the feel of the meeting. It's very important. Look at people's nonverbals. You will know when it's time to talk to your boss about a raise, in, you know, whether it's talk, time to talk for a vacation, whether you want to move your desk. You will know when your wife or girlfriend is having a bad day if you are connected to the people that you're with and you talk to them and you look at them in the eye. You will get ahead in business because your boss will say, hey, this kid knows something. This kid's got it. This kid's on the ball. It's not that you're that much smarter than everybody else. You're paying attention. Most people aren't paying attention, and that is the problem. Becoming a leader, this is where you guys are right now. There's a few general rules. There's a lot more, but I'm going to make a few tonight. Be a team player. Obviously, we all know that. How many people here are in sports or played sports even in high school? I mean, we all did something. Don't underestimate being a team player. Realize there are no shortcuts. If you find a shortcut, I will guarantee you it is wrong. Or I will guarantee you that somebody will find out about it, and they will not be impressed that you found a shortcut. There's a difference between a shortcut and doing things correctly and efficiently. Leave your ego at the door. You're all life. Okay, let's try it again. You're all life, which is really cool and really good. But when you go to work, especially for your first job, you just gotta tone it down just a little bit, okay? There's a difference between, well, that's the wrong thing, between cocky and confident. It's not about your schedule. 
Very important. I'm going to give you an example. The other, about two weeks ago, I did it, I got this deal that I'm doing with this guy, Anthony Scaramucci. And he's from uh, Skybridge Capital, SALT Conference, one of the biggest conferences in the world. And he offered me, because I was uh, teaching his interns, I was doing a few classes, a half an hour of his time to go over three deals that I was thinking about doing. And I'm like, I can't believe that this guy is taking the time out to talk to me. I'm like, when? Now I'm 49 years old, I've done pretty good in life, I've done okay. Here's this guy, I mean, he runs $7.9 billion in his hedge fund. He's like, 10 o'clock my office. I'm like, I'm there. I go to his office at 10 o'clock, he's not there. Turns out he had a doctor's appointment that he didn't have, that I thought he didn't have, but it turned out he did. And he messed up and he calls me up and he goes, when can you meet? I go, when can you meet? He goes, 4.30 this afternoon at my office. I, I just didn't, I didn't hesitate. I'm there. Meanwhile, I had to cancel everything that I had that afternoon. I had to figure out how to spend six and a half hours in the city of time that I hadn't had planned. But it wasn't like I said to him, you know, it's really not a good time since you didn't show up this morning. How's next week? Because you don't know if there's going to be a next week. So if you meet somebody and they say, are you available? You do everything you possibly can to make it work, period. Of people like this don't often give you second chances. So you got to take it and run. Listen, if I'm doing it at 49, you guys can do it. Time life moments, very important. We all have them. A time life moment is a moment where any direction in your life history can change, for the better or for the worse. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But the most important thing is that when you have one, and I'll explain what, like, what one of mine was, you need to grasp it and make sure you do it. Let me tell you about a great time life moment. My father was out of work. He was broke at 38 years old. He had graduated college three years early because he was mathematically genius. He was a mathematical genius. And he was out of work. He was at somebody's country club, and he was at the urinal, hanging out. They're not looking at each other. The guy says to him, Marty, where have you been? He's like, well, I've been out of work. I'm looking for work. And he goes, well, how about you come over and check out the commodities exchange? So my father goes, what's the commodities exchange? Oh, you can trade silver, Marty. Well, silver, how much can you make trading silver? Now, this is 1978. He goes, well, you can make $200. You can make $200 a day. So he's like, great. He goes down there, ends up being the biggest silver trader, one of the biggest silver traders in the world. Again, time life shift. You got to be confident and not cocky. You have to be able to admit when you're wrong. Being, over right, being right all the time is overrated. Nobody is right all the time. If you are wrong, it's OK. Accept it and move on. Don't stick to something just because you need to prove to somebody that you're right. Be able to look back and say, am I right, or is this working? Stay light on your feet, which is just really be able to change, and expect failure. Who here hasn't failed? Good. There are no excuses. Let's talk about excuses. I had an accident a year ago. I had an infection in my eye. I was, I was out, I had my hard contacts on, I put some water on my eye, I got a massive infection in my eye. I end up scratching my cornea. Well, when the cornea heals, it heals cloudy. I get a cornea transplant about a year ago. Everything was great. Four days after the cornea transplant, walk into my closet, take a t-shirt, rip it off the hanger, the hanger breaks, whips around into my eye, rips out my, my cornea, my optic lens, and my pupil. They rushed me to the hospital. They found my cornea underneath my lid. They found my lens somewhere at home. And they were able to put back the pupil, but it doesn't close. And that's why these lights are killing me. OK, but I meet Ryan, and he says, how would you like to speak at the Pike Convention? No excuses. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. This is an opportunity for me to share what I've learned. I could have very, very easily said to Ryan, to CNBC, to Fox, I fake it on TV all the time. I'm basically blind out of my right eye. I can see shapes and, and blurred, but I fake it pretty good right now. But again, no excuses, ever. You just get it, and you get it done. Understand risk-reward and correlation risk. You can even do that now. Risk-reward, putting pictures on Facebook just to show your friends how wasted you got the other night, and you ran down the street butt naked. Great, your friends see it, what's the risk? I, if I see that, you're not being hired. Not worth it. So really start looking at risk reward in life. Be straightforward, simple, because we are. Oh, yes.
Yeah, there you're getting there. Okay, be straightforward, no BS. Always stay connected, even as a boss. When my staff used to have to come in when there were exchange problems and the back office staff came in, and I didn't have, I, I was the front guy, I didn't know anything about the back office. I brought them breakfast, I sat there, I read newspapers, they said, what are you doing here? I said, if you're here, I'm here. I wasn't out playing golf, I wasn't out hanging out with my friends. If my office staff was there, I was in. I don't care if it was two o'clock in the morning or Saturday or Sunday, I always stayed connected. Realize that in chaos there's opportunity. Any good businessman will take a chaos situation and find something good out of it. Try to do that. Football games are controlled chaos. The good quarterbacks can find opportunity within that chaos. It is very, very important. Knights of the Round Table, get some. They're always good to have. You can do that now. You don't ever have to do anything alone. I have my Knights in my Round Table, and they often change once in a while because someone will let you down. Someone that you thought you could trust, you found out that you couldn't. It happens. But get a group of confidants that you can talk things out. Your own opinion all the time is not a good thing because most of the time you will not look at each, yourself in the mirror and go, well, I'm wrong. Have people at your round table that are strong enough to be able to say to you, you're wrong, you're out of your mind. What the hell are you thinking? If you have people that agree with you all the time in your life, you will find you will make many, many mistakes. Respect goes both, goes both ways, as I said, with my, with my employees. When they were there, I was there. Temptation, never worth it. There will be times in life where you get tempted. And you'll take the easy way out and try to make some money. Don't do it. I have a zero compliance record trading after 25 years because I never wanted to have to look at my kids and say, well, I was on the front of the Wall Street Journal because I was taken in because I was cheating. I was able to go on CNBC and call out the F CFTC and the SEC for what they weren't doing on the exchanges without any fear of retribution because the guys at CNBC are always like, you sure you want to say this? I'm like, sure, no problem. Now let's talk about leadership under pressure. I remember this great morning. It was gorgeous outside. I drive to work, park my car underneath the building, go to the elevator because I always have uh, breakfast upstairs, and you know, the express elevator wasn't working. This was when I was starting to get larger. And I got lazy. I was like, I don't want to deal with the local elevator. So I go upstairs. I go sit in my office. I start talking to somebody. First plane hits. I had eight people that I didn't meet for breakfast, 12 people that worked for my company that were up in a meeting that day. And I found out a lot about leadership on September 11th. It was very interesting. First of all, when we started, when the second plane hit, we started evacuating the building. So as you can see where it says NYMEX, we were about three blocks away, or one and a half blocks away. And I was right, I don't know if I can get this, I was right there when the building fell. But I made sure that I was the last person out of my office. So okay, I had my little leadership role there. But then what happened was we got a call from Washington, D.C. saying world oil markets were going crazy. You guys got to get up, and you got to get up as soon as possible. So the chairman, this guy Vinny Viola, who was a colonel at, at a Colonel Army Ranger in his past, brought the Nets back to Brooklyn, one of the most successful traders in the world. A kid from Brooklyn started out with nothing. He called an emergency board meeting. It was time to make sure that he led. I didn't have to take my ego talk about check your ego at the door. It wasn't about my ego trying to bump up against his. This guy knew what he was doing. He was more efficient than I was. He understood. And I sat back and I said, this is a time for me to learn from the best. And he ran the, the rebuilding of NYMEX in a week as a military operation. What you guys are too young to remember is that everything from Canal Street was closed for three months, except people didn't know what NYMEX was open. Okay, the stock market was no big deal because the buildings fell away from them, but the buildings fell on top of us. So we had to get cell towers in it. We had to rewire stuff, and they had all these board members doing it. And we were taken down on the ocean, you know, on the river by marine escorts. We had sharpshooters on, on, on the roof and, and bomb-sniffing dogs in the building. It was, and we had the morgue outside. It was three feet away from the building. But Vinny taught me how to really lead under pressure. And he kept it cool and he kept it good and he took everybody and put them 
in really where they should be. So when you become a leader, don't worry about stepping back and allowing someone with better skill set for that situation to take over. Don't step back and step out. Step back and open your eyes and learn. Because I don't care who you are, there will always be somebody that's a bigger leader, more money, better looking. There's always somebody. If you, unless you're Bill Gates, there's always gonna be somebody richer than you, so get over it. Okay, so you just gotta deal with that. Sorry. Now, there are no ifs. If this isn't gonna work, if this is not gonna work, the ifs piss me off. Okay, go for it. That was my button, if you saw in the first couple slides. Okay, ifs can really drive you crazy. Now, I was gonna read you this poem if, but if I do, you're gonna fall asleep. But I want everybody to do, do me a favor. I want you all to download this poem. This poem was given to me by my father when I was 13. It changed my life. I gave it to my son. I had it up on the wall at work. And it is a key point. And I'm just gonna read the last paragraph. If you can talk with cra uh, crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foe nor loving friend can hurt you, and all men count with you, but not too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. This poem changed my life. I kept it on my wall. In times of trouble, I went back to the poem. When you download the poem, read it thoroughly, read it through, and you will see what it can do for your life. It is a great roadmap to leadership. Now we're going to talk about where Pike is headed and where you guys are going to love this. Ready? Because we are... Pikes! Oh, come on, let's go. we got to wake up. One, two, three. Pikes! Good. Exponential networking. I'm not sure if it was really a word, but I threw it in there and I looked it up and it was. Okay, so imagine me being the, the guy in front. All of a sudden, I'm out, I hear this guy that I was talking about, Anthony Scaramucci from Skybridge Capital, starts talking about a restaurant, and he's opening up a restaurant in Manhattan. I only spoke to Anthony a couple times. I'm doing a deal with a named chef that I can't name right now, he's on TV, okay, in another part of the country, and here it is that you gotta look and think about that Anthony is here, the chef is there in my network, all the way at the end, and all of a sudden my first thought is, put them together. Okay, you know what the biggest mistake in networking is for most people? Most people only network within their own community. And that, you know, and that's a problem. Because let me explain to you how it normally works in networking. So here you have banking. Some people think that I was maybe a big shot or not a big shot in commodities. Okay, so, okay, big deal. So now you have government. You notice the two don't really go together. There are people, their senators came in. I gotta be honest with you, I was never impressed. I, you know, I had breakfast with Hillary. I met all the presidents. Never did anything for me. You know, just because Hillary walks in and says, oh, I'm Hillary Clinton, I'm like, okay, that's nice. We had no voting Hillary buttons on anyways. But, you know, it doesn't cross over. And then you have, I'm gonna have to walk down, I apologize. Okay, then you have healthcare, you have big shots in healthcare. Media, communications, but if you notice, you know, everybody knows a big shot in some area, right? Does everybody know somebody that's big in some area? They used to come onto the floor, I don't care, and guess what? You know, when I did a movie with a friend of mine, Michael Imperioli, you know, I walked on the set, I was like, hey, I'm on the board of the New York Mercantile Exchange. They're like, what? They didn't care. And that's hard, and that's hard when it comes to you guys. Okay, so here, then you got another, you know, you got the media, you got real estate. So here it is, you have all these different major networks that are hard to break in if you are a big shot or even if you're connected in any way, shape, or form. Now, how many people, how many president of the United States do we think that we have in this room? Well, I'm sure there's one or two. Okay, we'll take one, two. Rock stars and super athletes, right? If you were a rock star, super athlete, or president of the United States, guess what? You can do this, you can cross. Well, let me tell you about an interesting lunch I had a couple of months ago. It was, have, has anybody here looked up prominent pikes on the website? It's like, whoa. 
of a, so we have this lunch with Kevin Turner from CEO of Microsoft, the head legal counsel of Starbucks. You got this good uh, Bud, who is a sports athlete, you know, sports um, agent. And we had this meeting, and it was a great meeting. And we all talked about what can we do for Pike? Where should Pike go? Now it's time that Pike goes to the next level. And this helps out everybody in this room and will help out generations to come. And that's simply to make Pike the networking capital of any fraternity in the world. Because now that you're a Pike, and forever a Pike, you can actually now be connected. Because guess what? I'm here. You got people that from, you got people talking the next four or five, you know, three or four days of different communities. And you all now have connections with them. And what we're going to need from you and from the alumni is to make sure that we make Pike into a networking machine. Because in today's day and age, networking is more important than anything. Okay? It is tougher and tougher. We all know how hard it is to get jobs out there, right? You know, the, the, you know, the, the brain drain is tough. You know, there's just, you know, companies that are doing very well aren't hiring like they should. It's a problem. But with Pike, and Pike going forward, and the alumni of Pike stepping forward, helping out, working in the network. Brian, you're going to have a blast with this. <laughs> so, you know, he's like, what? You know, he's, he, we talked about this. He's going to do great, okay? You, and it's going to work out great. Does everybody understand how the networking is the most important thing that you guys are going to focus on? You guys are going to all connect with each other. You guys just put in Pi Kappa Alpha on LinkedIn. And anybody that has Pi Kappa Alpha in their database will link up. Link with all of them. Start your network now. I guarantee you that the people on this side of the room don't know the people on this side and don't know the people in the middle. You come from all over the place. Use this time to network. There are CEOs in this room right now. There are great lawyers to be in this room right now. There are media moguls in this room right now. You guys are all going to get there. And what you guys are going to realize is very simple, is that Pike, as a fraternity and as an entity, is growing to the next stage. And it is going to be more important for you guys to help out and stay connected.